Welcome to our Like TV News. I am Hadiza Galadima. Thanks for joining us. And now, the news headlines. Easter. Federal government declares a two-day public holiday. Staff who leaked Peter Obi Oyedokoko was suspended from work. Court sack Labour Party National Chairman. Three others. Pandemonium as Okada riders kill policemen in Lagos. Welcome back from the break and thanks for being with us. Now the news in full. The federal government on Monday has declared Friday 7th and Monday the 10th of April 2023 as a public holiday to mark this year's Easter celebration. The Minister of Interior, Rauf Aribosola, made this declaration in Abuja. Aribosola, in a report signed by the ministry's permanent secretary, Sherwood Bogori, on Wednesday, urged Christians to simulate the virtues of sacrifice, togetherness, forgiveness, kindness, love, peace, and patience, which were attributes and practices of Jesus Christ, as symbolized by his ministry on the earth. The minister called on Christians and all Nigerians to use the occasion to pray for an end of the security challenges in some parts of the country. Aribe Shola said, security is everybody's business, and therefore, all just Nigerians and foreigners residing in the country to display a high sense of citizenship and public spiritedness by supporting the efforts of all security agencies in bringing peace and security to the lives and properties of the citizenry. The minister assured that the federal government is doing all that it is necessary to ensure a peaceful transition of government following the peaceful conduct of elections. While wishing Christians at home and in the diaspora a happy and peaceful Easter celebration, he also urges them to love their neighbors through acts of kindness and generosity of spirits with the well-to-do, sharing their happiness with the less privileged around them. Arik Beshola once more assures Nigerians that the nation is persistently on a path to greatness and encourages all to positively deploy their creative energy to the full realization of the coming prosperity. While the journalist answerable for the release of the phone conversation between the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and the general overseer of the Living Faith Church, Bishop David Oyedepo, has been suspended from work. People's Gazette on Tuesday suspended Ariola Babalola over his conduct online that violated the newspaper's social media policy and called into question its integrity. The development was announced in a memo released by the platform's deputy managing director, Bola Dali Adekoya. Babalola, following the suspension, agreed to attend counseling during the suspension to further improve his conduct. Adekoya, in a memo, stated that Ayola Babalola met with the HR, where he was directed to proceed on suspension for one month without pay. Babalola is a passionate and reputable member of the organization's editorial team, the publication's senior staff noted. He, however, stated that the reporter's conduct on social media, both from months past and of recent as last weekend, grossly violated the organization's guidelines on personal conduct. The management made the decision after carefully reviewing the reporter's scattered retorts to, relent to relentless online trolls and concluded that Babalola did not act with decorum and professionalism expected of the Gazette's employee. Adekoya, however, noted that the suspension was a challenging decision for the organization. Mr. Babalola faced various attacks on social media following our school 
on Peter Obi's phone call with Bishop Oyedepo. Still why the organization sympathizes and stands strongly with Mr. Babalola and all members who are reportedly under social media onslaught, the manners with which his colleague handled online trolls is what distinguishes them as professionals. Although the controversial tweet had been taken down by Babalola, screenshots of the tweets could have still affect their professionalism, parental guidance in the future. Abuja High Court has blocked the national chairman of the Labour Party, Mr. Julius Aburi, National Secretary Alhaji Farouk Ibrahim, and two others from parading themselves as national officers of the party. Others also concerned by the order are the National Organizing Secretary, Mr. Clement Ujuku, and the treasurer of the party, Justice Hamza Mwanzu, issued the restraining order while ruling in an exported application argued by Ugu Onoja. San Onoja had in the application informed the court how the national officers allegedly falsified several documents of the FCT High Court to carry out illegitimate substitu substitutions in the general election. Among the documents were the receipts, seals, and affidavit of the court to carry out alleged criminal activities. Onoja attended several documents affirming to the to the judge that the chief registrar of the court wrote to the Labour Party to disown several documents used for the alleged criminal activities by Aburi and three others. Onoja stated that following their indictment by the police investigation, the four people are to be arraigned in court, adding that warrants for the arrest has already been obtained. In a ruling, Justice Moazo held that the application and the supporting affidavit has made out a good case for the request to be granted. The judge subsequently ordered that the four officers should immediately stop parading themselves as national officers of the Labour Party. He fixed April 17th as the return date for the continuation of the case. While there is an arrest in Lagos State as commercial motorcyclists, better known as Okada riders, reportedly killed a policeman along Apapa Oshodi Expressway in Lagos. According to the City Mirror, three guns belonging to the policeman were skyjacked during the incident that took place around Sele bus stop. It was also gathered that shortly after the officer was killed, the Okada riders, numbering about 100, ran towards my two end. It was gathered that the lifeless body of the officer was by the roadside and not fewer than five patrol vehicles filled fu with fully armed policemen were pursuing the Okada riders towards mile two along the express. The riders were also seen brandishing objects like cutlasses, sticks and iron rods as they fled from the police arrest. The cause of the confrontation between the Okada riders and the deceased policeman was not yet clear. The Lagos State Police Command Public Relations Officer Benjamin Hundei affirmed the incident to newsmen. He added that he is yet to get details of what led to the incident. Okay, and now we'll be going on a short break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back from the break and thanks for staying with us. And now over to President Buhari, who has ordered the sack of the Executive Vice Chairman of the National Agency of Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Niseni, 
Professor Mohammed Sani Haruna. The, the development followed the discovery that the president had wrongly granted him a two-year tenure extension, even after already concluding two terms of five years each. Director of Information in the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Willy Bassi, who declared this in a statement issued Tuesday night, said Professor Mohammed Haruna is to immediately hand over to the next most senior officer in the establishment. The statement reads, President Mohammed Buhari has instructed the Executive Vice Chairman of the National Agency of Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Nisani Professor Mohammed Sani Haruna, to immediately hand over his office to the next most senior officer in the establishment. He added that the president appreciates the contributions of Professor Haruna in the development of the engineering infrastructure subsector of the economy. He wishes him success in his future endeavors. The Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Baba Tundi Fashola, says the Lagos Ibadan and Abuja Kano Expressway will be met by April 30th. Fashola said this in a pre inspection of the completed local way to bridge in Nasarawa State on Wednesday. He appealed to the commuters on the road for continuous patience and understanding, adding that it is, difficult, it is a difficult project to execute because it is perhaps one of the busiest roads in the country. And that building through 40,000 vehicular traffic daily is not an easy undertaking and the road cannot be shut down and it therefore has to manage and divert traffic for the safety of those involved in the construction. He estimated that in about four weeks, 26 days, plus or minus, the road should be fully completed, open to traffic from Lagos to Ibadan and beyond the toll gate up to kilometer 116. According to him, what will be left is nine kilometers from kilometer 17 to 27. Fashola stated that why that will be left is the Oyo State government drainage construction across the road, adding that the drainage was necessary to help address the issue of excessive flooding and climate change in the state. Speaking also about the Abuja Kano Expressway to be completed on April 30th as well, Fashala said it is the biggest of all the roads projects in terms of scope and budget. Abuja Kano is the largest of the three projects in terms of scope, in terms of size, and in terms of budget. It is 375 kilometers. It also encompasses 41 bridges of different sizes. It is the last to start, so it cannot finish at the same time. Fashala, however, said the Abuja Kaduna Road, which is one of the projects embarked upon by the Buhari administration, is the most difficult, the most traffic, and the busiest, and it is the busiest road that has suffered all kinds of delay and would not be finished within the span of this administration, having almost 40,000 vehicles in the traffic every day. And now over to Plateau State, where the police command has sealed the House of Assembly complex. This is a result of the ongoing speakership crisis. A team of anti-riot policemen arrived at the assembly complex by 5 a.m. and barricaded the main entrance. Though the police command is yet to issue an official announcement on the action, Daily Trust learned that it is not unattached to the brewing crisis amongst the members of the House of Assembly. The House is divided into two factions, with one loyal to the current speaker, Right Honorable Yakubo Sanda, and the other loyal to the reinstated speaker, Right Honorable Ayuba Abok, who was impeached in October 2021. Recall that the court had reinstated Abok on Monday and the next day he stormed the National Assembly to take charge. The group of civil society has called on the release of a seven core member, 26-year-old Mr. Namdi M. M. A., the seven member of the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, and an IT consultant to the Anambra State Police Command has been in detention in Abuja since March 3, 2023 for allegedly exposing the illegal activities of some senior officers in Anambra State. The whistleblower who once worked with the Anambra State Police Command is believed to have leaked information about the alleged atrocious activities of the police officers such as extortion, torture, extrajudicial execution and organ harvesting by senior police officers in Anambra State to the media. He has been in detention in Abuja after his arrest on March 3, 2023. He is, however, believed to have re been recently hunted back to Oka for trial, but the coalition of 29 civil society organizations said the man should be released or immediately charged to court if he is found guilty of any crime. 
He was transferred to the Anambra State Police Command, where he is currently facing further interrogations. Amongst his interrogators in Anambra State are senior police officers whom he had indicted for seizing Porsche vehicles recovered from criminal suspects who were later executed in police custody. Nigerians urged the Nigerian police to immediately release him or charge him for a recognized offense. The organization added that they believe MN Namdi will be at risk of ill treatment or extrajudicial execution if, not, if he's not released or charged to court immediately. And now over to the APC in Taraba, where the All Progressive Congress Chief David Sabokente stated that Taraba has prepared to embark on massive reconciliation after the crisis that led to the loss of the governorship election. Sabokente, a chieftain of APC in the state and a frontline candidate for the gubernatorial contest, was speaking on the party's loss of the governorship and other election in Taraba State. Sabokente, a chieftain of APC in the state, and a frontline candidate for the gubernatorial contest was speaking on the party's loss of the governorship and other election in Taraba State. He said through reconciliation was crucial if the party intended to actualize its plan of taking over the state. The philanthropist who blamed APC's loss on the internal crisis that rocked the party said he lost the election because the issues were not resolved at the appropriate time. It was a matter of injury to people's con conscience and also a severe conflict. According to him, Senator Emmanuel Bacha's name was wrongly included on the ballot paper as the party's flag bearer because the Supreme Court had ruled that primary election which brought him was null and void. Sabo Kante also expressed his confidence that APC would have won the elections as 95% of the new Nigerian People's Party MPP members were aggrieved APC faithfuls who defected to the party. He noted that though he was still in court trying to ensure that those who caused the party's conflict were penalized, he explained further that it was one of the steps he was taking to ensure true reconciliation. Sabo Kente dismissed claims that religion played a major role in the way the people voted, saying Taraba did not vote across religion, religious lines. On his next line of action and future plans, Sabo Kente said he would confirm with his constituents and was sure to do their bidding. It will be recalled that the People's Democratic Party, PDP, had emerged as winner of the election with NNPP coming second and the APC third. A resident pastor of Living Faith Church, a local Oganigo in the Kena local government area of Kogi State, Jacob Woody Olobo, was reportedly killed by gunmen who intruded the town on Sunday. The pastor was said to have escaped with some, mem some of his members to a safer area when they, st when they struck during the early morning service. According to one of his members, Samuel, the pastor went back to check the state of the church after the attack when the invaders shot and killed him. He escaped during the church service in the morning and assumed everything was calm and went back to check the church if it was touched and he got killed. It was discovered that the pastor who had earlier posted on his Facebook account how he had escaped the morning attack died a few hours later. Holobo is said to have organized a crusade program christened Let the Fire Fall, Three Nights of Wonders, built to take place between April 13th and 15th in the church before the incident. He survived by his wife and a child. That's all the news on Oweleke TV News. Do follow our social media handles displayed on your screen for inquiries and other placement. I am Hadiza Galadima. Thanks for staying with us. See you next time and do stay safe.